You're watching Lookies from the BBC. Coming up, big in Chile, but unknown at home. Be nice to be big in Chile. <laughs> <wouldn't it? laughs> now, yesterday we looked at the problems facing commuters on the first Capital Connect Thameslink service into London. The Thameslink line is now at the centre of Britain's biggest rail project. When it's completed, it will link Bedford and Luton with London and the South Coast. Stuart Ratcliffe has been given exclusive access to the building work. Could this be the beginning of a new dawn for rail passengers? Scenes like this are all too familiar. 50% of Thameslink commuters say often the trains are so full they can't even get on board. But the line is now being rebuilt at a cost of £5.5 billion. Pounds. The Thameslink programme is all about improving capacity on this route, one of the most congested routes on the UK's railways. By December 2011, we'll have uh, introduced new stations, longer platforms and longer trains to allow us to start offering, offering the first 50% longer 12-car trains on this route. The project was launched in Luton by the Transport Minister in 2007, and since then many platforms have been extended and new trains have come into service. But the real work is taking place in London. You can see uh, in front of us is the brand new construction site to redevelop Blackfriars Station for December 2011 when we start operating 12 car services through. Now when this station is complete, the number of trains using it will virtually double. 24 trains an hour will pass in each direction through this station. That's a train every two and a half minutes. This is the biggest engineering project at the moment on national railways in build. It brings new journey opportunities for commuters in your area, not just in the middle of main line, but in the later stages actually from the East Coast main line too. And that means passengers from Cambridge, Peterborough and Stevenage will also be able to travel through London to the south coast without changing. But passengers have waited a long time for this scheme. When it was first suggested, it was due to open in the year 2000. And as long as it escapes any future public spending cuts, it's on track to be completed in 2016. Stuart Rackley, BBC Look East. Now to the story of a rock guitarist known all over the world, but not in his hometown of Great Yarmouth. His name is Vinnie Shilito, and he's the bass player for the psychedelic rock group Osric Tentacles. Now, the band is a very big in Europe and in South America, but not here. Here's Mike Liggins. I'm in the restaurant at Great Yarmouth College, and uh, that bloke over there is famous. Don't look now. It's Vinnie Shilito. I find out later that Shilito is actually pronounced Shilito, very rock and roll. The point is that even at Great Yarmouth College, where Vinny is studying, no one knows who he is. Vinny is studying for a degree in music because he wants to teach, but he's also the bass player for a band called the Osric Tentacles. And while they have the fans in this country, the tentacles have a big following across Europe and South America, of all places. The Osric Tentacles albums have been selling in the South Americas for 20 years, and it was the first time we'd ever been. So people were coming from Bolivia, Peru, Argentina, every, from all over the place with albums to sign, from Fred to sign these albums. He's always the main guy in the band. And uh, yeah, that was, there was like 20,000 people there, 25,000 people at a festival. So does anyone in Great Yarmouth know the Osric Tentacles? Who do you think? No idea. Guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he's loving it. Osric Tentacles. No. Ever heard of them? No. What do you like then? Drum and bass. Drum and bass? Yeah. Who are they? Wouldn't you like to be a bit famous? I'd like the money. But it's, uh, I've, I've, I've sat and thought about that fame and fortune. I'd just rather have the fortune because you see all of the, the, the crap that the famous people get, you know, and the papers don't leave them alone and blah, blah, blah. I just have the fortune, never mind the fame. I'm quite happy without that, actually. So for now, Vinnie Shilito, sorry, Shilito, remains an unsung hero of rock music. Hello, Mike. Is there any chance of uh, me just having a photo taken with you? Yeah, 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 Is that yeah, all right? By all means. Yeah. But just in case he does get famous one day, I've got the photo. Mike Liggins.
BBC Look East. <laughs> I think he's got a good point. A, it actually works well being famous in yeah. Chile, but not famous here. Give him the choice between the money and the fame. <laughs> yeah. Mm. You don't really want to be mobbed in Great Yarmouth when well, you're at college, do you? <laughs> I'm sure you're mobbed in great oh, the whole time. Regularly, regularly. <laughs> uh, Phil, how about you? <laughs> uh, not mobbed, but people do chase me for other reasons, I believe. It's down to the weather. <laughs> uh, in general terms, the weather itself is looking uh, fairly settled through the weekend. There's always a but with the weather, and today it's a little front that's been working its way down the North Sea.